everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be doing something that I have been waiting a very long time to do. As soon as we saw the AEW action figures, you know, on TV, we saw the images, we knew the announcements, all the things going on with the AEW action figures. I was super excited because you guys know that we do WWE action figure surgery. We love to do customization and fixing up and changing parts and doing all kinds of crazy customs and fix-ups here on the channel. So when I saw the AEW figures, man, the first thing I thought of was how can we customize these guys? Will they be as customizable as WWE figures? Can you switch the parts? Can you heat up the arms? What's swappable? What's not swappable? Can you acetone them? You know, can you remove logos and tattoos? Can you remove paint from the face? Can you? Can we take logos off the tights? Can we apply decals to them? We're going to answer all those questions today, guys, because I got a bunch of AEW figures here today, and I don't think I'm going to test any of these in the back, but I did pick up an extra Cody from Walmart, and the reason that I grabbed this Cody for the customization was look at the head sculpt right here. You guys can see that the eye socket right there is out of line. The eye did not line up with the eyeball right there. So I figured it'd be a perfect test subject for us to get in here and just kind of mess around with it. See what's going on with it. We're going to do all kinds of tests on it. See what we got going on. I got some decals that we're going to apply to him. We got some acetone in the house that we're going to see if we can remove some logos from this guy. We're going to test the acetone on different parts of the body. That way we can see, you know, what can be removed, what can't be removed. You know, how the plastic reacts to certain things with the acetone, you know, because because on a Mattel figure, if you put, and let me see if I can get a little t test subject right here. You guys know if you put acetone on a Mattel torso, it will eat the plastic. The, the torso piece, the upper torso, the bottom torso, and the crotch, you cannot put acetone on those things because if you do, if it sits on it too long, it will actually eat and melt the plastic. Everywhere else, I'm pretty sure, is free game, and it won't damage the figure, and I think you can remove paint, but if you put it on the torso or the crotch piece or the lower torso, it will melt the plastic. So we're going to find out if any of those rules apply to AEW figures. We're going to try and apply some decals to them. We're going to do some really cool things here today and just see what we can come up with, how the stuff reacts, and just kind of see what's going on with it. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get started with what we're going to be doing here today. I guess the first thing that we can do is test out the acetone portion because I do want to see how acetone reacts to these things, what it looks like, all of that good stuff. We are going to be removing parts and seeing what you know what parts we can switch out what parts can go on what and all that stuff what we'll do first is we'll do the acetone portion see what it removes you know how it reacts to everything and then we will probably do the part switching portion and then we will do the decal application and see what that does but with that being said guys let's go ahead and dive into the removal of some of these logos or let's just see you know how the acetone reacts with the plastic all right, guys, so what I guess we're going to do first is just kind of see how the acetone reacts on each part of the body. So I guess we're going to start off on the boots and just kind of work our way up to the top of the head. Now, I do have a decal that I'm going to try and put right here. It is this Bullet Club decal. So what I'm going to do is, I guess, acetone this off, and then later on, we're going to stick this on here when we get to the decal application part. I think this actually is a logo or a decal that was supposed to go on a Cody Rhodes Custom from way back in the day when I first started customizing and just never... Like, I used to not be, know how to do decals whatsoever, and I'm just so glad that I learned how to do that. It said, it just, Jesus, man, that ish was terrible. But how we're going to do this first is we're going to start off with the boots, and we're going to try to remove this CR logo. And I have my 100% acetone, you guys know, platinum, pure strength. I don't know where the hell I got platinum from, but professional nail polish. You guys know, we're, we're professional here. 100% acetone, you can get it from Walmart for like two and a half bucks or something like that. But anyways, I'm going to pour some of this into the cap, being very careful not to pour it on the floor or anywhere else, because I don't want this everywhere but we're just going to pour some into the cap here and then we're going to use this as a little dipping mechanism and then we're going to dip our q-tip here in there and just see how this reacts to the boot it may eat the plastic all to hell it may not but at least we're going to know moving forward how that reacts but just a small dip right here and just kind of see all right so it does look like the boot logo is coming off i don't notice any burning or anything like that just yet but you know time will definitely tell to see if you know if we run into any problems or anything like that but for the most part it does look like it's removing it pretty easily i don't see any burning or anything like that like i do on the torsos now i know that some of the developers of these figures also work with mattel so i'm not sure if they're going to use the same parts i'm not sure how that works or you know what the what goes into that but so far so good i don't see any problems or anything like that you do get some like bleeding from the blue but that's pretty uh normal you know you gotta you gotta get it with the extra stuff in there make sure you get all that blue off and i don't know that's not looking too bad i'm gonna do one more little pass over right here make sure we get all the cleanliness on there you know you don't want any blue stuff left behind there is a little bit there i could probably get it off if i kept on going with it but feeling 
wearing it, it definitely feels like a Mattel piece. Like, it feels like a boot or a kick pad from a Mattel figure. And there you go. The, the CR is completely gone. I don't see any problems with that right there. Flipping it on the other side, you guys can see there's the CR, what it looked like. So, the paint does come off. The plastic right here does not get affected. I guess now we can move up to the logo on the thigh right here because I want to see how this uh, American Nightmare logo. You guys know that Cody always wears these kinds of logos. His gear is always pretty much the same. It's just, you know, the colors change and some of the graphics sometimes change, but I guess now we can see how this graphic reacts to the acetone and see if it will come off or if it will be, you know, uh, any different reaction to the plastic. Okay, so actually this seems to be coming off way easier. It doesn't seem to have any, like, it doesn't seem to have any resistance. It literally is just melting right off, so that is pretty interesting. Wow, that's kind of very satisfying to just see that wipe off like that. It's not giving me any troubles or any issues like that. So it does look like this leg is molded in gold. I'm actually, I'm actually really curious to know if the other leg is molded in gold or if it's molded in blue. If they molded it in two separate colors or if they molded it in the same color and then just painted it. Actually interested to know that, but it doesn't look like we're running into any issues, man. I mean, the, the, the logo is wiping right off. I'm not seeing any melting or anything like that. It looks pretty much completely chill. Now, one thing I can say is it does look like there's some paint seeping into that thigh gap right there, which we're going to see when we take the figure apart to see if, you know, we run into any issues, but I don't know, pretty clean right there. Clean logo removal there and there. So it looks like the legs are free game. Any any leg portion, the boots are fine. The legs are fine. Now, I'm actually interested to see. It does feel like this is the same type of plastic here, but I am curious, so I am going to take off one of these logos right here on the front just to be sure because I want to know if it's going to, you know, eat away at that plastic or not or if it should just wipe off right there. And it, I, I can't really tell right now, but I don't know if that's because of that graphic or what the case is. It's definitely getting a little messy there, but I don't think it's I don't think it's melting the plastic. Oh, that's why it's so heavy. It's because that blue is painted on, so it is gold underneath. That's why you're getting so much heavy, heavy stuff going on right there, but I guess it is completely possible. You could remove all the paint and make that gold, so that's why it's getting so globby. It's not that it's melting the plastic. It's because that it's, it's taking off this extra blue coat of paint that's over the figure. Look at all that blue paint right there. So there's a ton of blue paint. That is why. Which I figured, you know, I I, I knew that was probably the case. So they molded these legs in gold and then coated them in blue over here because it is a split attire. And the reason that they do that is because the gold's a lighter color and the blue will cover that easier. Or at least that's what I'm guessing, but that's pretty wild. I'm not seeing any burning or melting of the plastic, though. It looks to be okay. It's just, obviously, there's just so much blue paint right here that it's, like, giving it trouble, but that's enough of that. We'll move on to the torso portion, but I don't know. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute, just see how that reacts, and then we'll come back to it, but all right, guys, so I let it dry a little bit, and it feels okay. I think you could actually remove all of that without any problems or anything like that, and I guess if you needed to get more of this off and you wanted to use a towel, you could just remove the torso from the crotch and then get that there so without, you know, having to worry about this top torso piece, but let's go ahead and dip this right here and just see how the acetone reacts to the lower part and just see how it dries. I know there's no logos or anything, but I just want to see how the silicone reacts to the uh, the acetone right there to make sure that, you know, we don't get any weird stuff going on, no chemical reactions or anything. It doesn't seem like anything's happening, but just in case there's a tattoo on a figure going forward or something, you guys will know that, you know, that's not going to affect it or anything. So it doesn't look like that's going to happen, but let's see how it reacts to the torso. Now, this is actually really important to see how this reacts, and I'm going to see if I can remove this dream tattoo and just kind of see what goes on right here. And there is the dream tattoo gone, but how is the acetone going to react? Is it going to melt it? Kind of seems like, I don't know, it kind of looks like it may do that. We're going to see. It doesn't feel bad, but it looks like it left a little sheen right there. I'm going to do one more little pass over right here just to see how that reacts again because there may just be some leftover paint or something. All right, let's just see how that dries real quick, and then we'll see how that goes. But it did remove it removed the tattoo completely, but I want to see how the torso dries and see if it leaves any marks or anything like that, just in case you want to customize a Cody Rhodes torso or remove it or whatever the case is. Like, it feels super smooth. It's definitely super-duper smooth, and what it looks like it did is it just removed that finish from the torso. So you may be able to just remove a tattoo and then come back with, like, a matte spray and hit it 
it and it would probably bring it back to this finish because this is a matte finish this is a shiny finish so what the acetone does is actually removes the finish from the product it pretty much wipes off the sealer that you put on a figure once you're done customizing it so it removed the tattoo but it definitely leaves a shimmer behind because it removes that matte sealant over the top of it and I guess you could just come back with a matte spray and probably fix that but that is what you get when you remove the tattoo I'm also interested I guess we can go ahead and hit this hand right here this Cody hand let's see how his uh, hands react when we remove this small tattoo on the finger all right, so his tattoo's gone. It doesn't, I mean, that that literally did nothing. So hands look like they're going to be okay to do that with. I don't think you'll have any issues with that. Another thing I want to do is go ahead and remove this. And let's remove this wrist tape right here and just see how this goes. See how this arm skin, you know, reacts to the, to the acetone as well. All right, so for me, it does feel like the arms are made out of the same material as the boots. And I don't think you'll have any issues with that. So, so far we are learning that it looks like torsos are the only thing so far that are having any problems. It doesn't seem like crotches are having that big of a problem. Like, you get a little bit of marbling on there. I'm not gonna lie. Like, if you left it on there for a long, long time, it might, but I don't know. It doesn't look that bad to me. But anyways, let's move on to the head sculpt real quick and just kind of see what goes on with this. Now, I honestly, oh uh, man, I really don't want to mess up the head sculpt, but I guess I could just repaint it if there's any problems. All right, to me, it does not look like this is working at all. It doesn't look like the acetone is, like, really removing anything from this head sculpt, which is kind of ridiculous. I thought for sure it would just wipe right off. Wow, that is crazy. Okay, so it doesn't look like any paint really comes off the face, so you're just going to have to repaint a head sculpt, I guess, because the acetone is not really working, which... I found that that kind of work that kind of happens with the new Mattel head sculpts, like the True Effects technology. It's like you can't wipe off the True Effects technology, which is kind of weird. Yeah, so that that's it. It will not it will not come off. But that I think that pretty much does it for our acetone test. I guess now we can get into some part swapping. All right, guys. So getting into part swapping, okay, something that's really easy to do. If you guys didn't know, is that you can just pop their head sculpt straight off. And I think if you just wanted to head swap two of the AEW figures, it's actually really simple. I think you can literally just pop them both off like you can just pop off the Jericho and then just pop this right onto the Cody so I don't think you have any issues to worry about there so if they released another figure line or anything like that you could easily just pop it off and switch it right there so if you guys wanted to do any type of head swap at all you don't have to heat it up or anything like that you literally just pop it off the figure and pop it right onto another figure and uh, that makes it really really simple another thing that you can also do with these figures that's really simple as well is you can also just pop off the torsos and put those on one another so if you have this Cody Rhodes right here and you don't like the torso you can just pop it off like so here's the legs there's the ball joint right there and say you wanted to switch it with this Chris Jericho you do the same thing, quick little twisties, put it over here, and you can just pop that onto the Cody Rhodes legs and do with that whatever you will. You know, you can do whatever you want. The, the possibilities are kind of endless. You know, I haven't seen anything where you can pop out the shoulder. I guess if you really wanted to, maybe one day somebody's going to crack this torso and do some shoulder swaps and stuff, but I think this is the easiest way to do it. You can just, com you can just completely switch out uh, torsos and onto other bodies, and that's probably the best way you can do that. Now, as far as arms and other stuff like that, I'm not exactly sure. I don't think you can just pull these off and just, I don't know, I don't like, I don't know if I like that idea. I'm going to try it, I guess, with this Cody since it's already beat to hell. You might as well just try it. Yeah, that's just, uh, it, it doesn't seem like that's the case. So you're probably going to have to heat that up and do the simple, you know, heat and pop method or whatever. The boil and pop, you can do the, the hair dryer, which I use. So I guess real quick, I'm going to heat up these arms and we'll see how that pops off. Alright guys, let's just see how this goes, see how these figures swap at all. Okay, so it is a little bit different than Mattel, but it does pop off, so there you go. That is what the peg looks like, if you guys were wondering. A little bit different than Mattel's for sure, and there's the little bicep that you can pop off right there, and then you would just pop that back on, and it just goes up in there, so there, there you go. I mean, that's, that's pretty much that, and then the legs down here are on ball joints, and I guess they got heated up enough, so you guys see that this is on a ball joint, and you can just pop that back in there like so. You can also separate it right here at the thigh. Very similar to a Mattel figure. 
So there is the separation at the thigh. And then at the knees and stuff, it's the same thing as Mattel with the peg. So you'd heat that up and you'd remove the peg and then you'd do the same thing right there. And this can go gluing back up in there. And I'm sure in the future when we do like action figure surgeries and stuff like that, when we get new figures and I think of fix-ups and swaps that we can do, I'll probably test these theories out even, you know, more and see, you know, uh, what arms can switch on what torsos or arms and shoulders and stuff like that, what boots can go on what. Uh, we'll figure that along as we go and you guys can learn that from action figure surgery, but it is nice to get a base idea. What One thing I do want to do is I do want to either put this Bullet Club logo right here on the boot, or I do want to put this uh, this Ty Dillinger tattoo right here on Cody's pet, just to see what that looks like. I think that would be absolutely hilarious, so I'm going to do that real quick and see exactly how it applies and see if it goes on cleanly and all of that stuff, so just stay tuned. Alright guys, so here are the decals applied to the Cody figure as you guys can see. I went with the Ty Dillinger tattoo on the pec right there. Looking pretty good, maybe a little bit off center, you know. And it might have looked even better over here, you know, but you know, it is what it is. I, I don't care, it's just a little test theory, you know, nothing too crazy like that. And then we did add the Bullet Club logo to the boot. Pretty simple stuff, nothing too crazy. It did adhere pretty good. It seems like it is on there nicely. If you're customizing or anything like that with these AEW figures, I don't think you're going to have any problems. I'm putting your decals on there from Curb Stomp City Custom Decals, which is where these came from. But I hope you guys enjoyed the little customizing tutorial, seeing what kind of works, what kind of does it, and you know, just kind of playing it by ear. You know, I actually even thought about making this guy bald just to see if the bald technique worked on this, uh, you know, on this head sculpt. And you know what? The more I sit here, the more I want to do it. F it, I'm doing it. I'm using the bald technique. I'll see you guys in a few moments. Alright guys, so here is the Cody figure with the bald head sculpt, you know, it's definitely not perfect. I did it really, really quickly just to get it up here in the video just to see if it was possible, and it's possible. You can make these figures bald. I think the only figures you probably couldn't make bald is probably Nick Jackson, probably Chris Jericho, and possibly Kenny Omega, but Cody Rhodes is free game. I think Matt Jackson is free game, and um, I, I think that's about it, but you know, it's not a perfect bald head sculpt. I definitely need to sand down the top of the head a little bit more, but you know, I just, I just wanted to get this up to you guys and showcase what that looks like uh kind of looks like a totally completely different wrestler now you know you got the chest tattoo no dream tat uh he's missing wrist tape right there you could switch out that hand there you could easily switch out the attire but that's funny i, I made just a, a bald head sculpt here for the cody guy and uh yeah his head's definitely too tall i need to fix that a little bit but i just wanted to do it for the video just to showcase it to you guys and test out some customization on these figures but that pretty much does it for the customizing aew figures video guys thank you so very much for watching let me know what you guys think of everything down in the comment section below. I'm going to try to have Action Figure Surgery episode 50 up for Saturday morning, so that would be a nice little upload for you guys, but I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My name is Toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.